In this last video, we are going to extend our theory to the semi Riemannian scenario. So we first need to define the isoparametric functions and isoparametric manual. So a semi, if we fix a semi Riemannian space form, that is the semi Euclidean space, the pseudosphere and the semi Euclidean hyperbolic space, then Han defined a, is an isoparametric hypersurface to be the ones that has constant principal curvatures as in the Riemannian case, but also constant algebraic multiplicity. And then Magid tried to make a classification in case of the Minkowski space, that is when the signature S equals one. Xiao make a classification of the anti of the isoparametric hypersurfaces in case of the anti de Sitter space. And Li tried to make a classification for the the Sitter space. So this is this belongs to the real of Lorentzian manifold, Lorentzian geometry. But this story is not complete because Magid has a gap in in his proof, and Xiao used the same ideas as Magid to obtain his classification. So there is also a gap here in the classification. And also Lee used the ideas given by Magid and Xiao to, to make the classification, some uh, partial classification on the sphere. So actually we do not have a complete classification even in, the, in, this, in this kind of geometry. These are the simplest, uh, simplest semi-Riemannian manifold the Lorentzian manifold. So it is an open problem to give the complete classification of isoparametric hypersurfaces in these space forms. Also, in case of general signatures, L bigger than one, S bigger than one. So we continue. Han gives its definition, his definition in a really geometric way, okay? But we have also isoparametric functions. But now this is, if we erase this, this is the definition of isoparametric function, a Riemannian isoparametric function. What is a semi-Riemannian isoparametric function? It is going to be the same, but we are going to change. Since we do not have a norm in the semi-Riemannian setting, we have to replace this norm by something equivalent. And this guy here is the divergence of the gradient. So an isoparametric function in the semi-Riemannian setting is a function such that there exists again two functions in such a way that this kind of norm, this semi norm, or what it is, is going to be given by the composition of B and F. It's a form, it's a function of F itself, and it is given by this operator here. This operator is also the divergence of the gradient but now in the semi-Riemannian setting. So we can make the same trick. If we have an isoparametric function, an isoparametric function is something that is defined on the whole manifold, okay? It is really important to, to see this. 
So we can make the same trick if we have an isoparametric function, we look for solutions to this kind of uh, semi-linear semi equations. If we consider u to be given like this, then a function u is a solution to this problem if and only if it's a solution to this ODE. Again, it is going to be a singular solution. But now we have some interesting things. The first one is that this operator here is no longer elliptic. So this operator is a ultra hyperbolic operator. It is called the D'Alembert operator. And to fix some ideas, we are going to consider the Minkowski space. So we have here a metric with M, M plus sign and one minus sign. And we can decompose the points here in terms of a time, uh, a time coordinate and space variables. So this guy here is given explicitly by the wave operator. So the D'Alembert operator is nothing, uh, in case of the Laurentian case, it is nothing than um, the, um, the wave operator. But in case of signature S bigger than one, the, the general case, if we consider U with two kinds of coordinates, space, space coordinates and time coordinates, and in the time coordinates, we give the minus sign and in the time and in the space variables, we give the plus sign of the metric, then we're going to obtain that this operator is a battle between these two Laplacians. This is a Laplacian in the time variable minus a Laplacian in the space variable. These operators are really complicated to study. So it is really amazing that we can reduce these kind of operators into a singular ODE. So it is, so the power of isoparametric functions in the semi-Riemannian case is really, really evident. We can reduce really nasty equations to some ODEs. But we have a price here to pay. As I said before, we need a function that is defined on the whole manifold. These are globally defined. And what we have done here, we have here a geometric definition of isoparametric hypersurface. What is the relation between isoparametric hypersurfaces given by the definition of Han and the hypersurfaces given by an isoparametric function. We are going to see this. Well, before, give, before saying something more, I, I want to, to see concrete examples of this kind of functions. If we consider a symmetric operator on this semi-Euclidean space, and we consider this polynomial, then this function is going to be isoparametric. And we have here that some nasty things happen. For instance, we have, if we consider A to be the identity, we're going to obtain the, let's say the radial case in the semi-Riemannian setting, and it is given by a foliation given by these hyperboloids, paraboloids, and also a cone. This cone is going to be the focus of manifold. It's going to play the role of the focal manifold. But now this is no longer a manifold. Why? Because this cone has these kind of singularities here. So it is no 
it is not even a topological manifold. It is an algebraic variety. So we have here to be careful because we are not obtaining, as in the Riemannian case, a singular Riemannian population. We are obtaining something really different. But we can also play and define operators having this form. Each of these blocks are going to be given by these guys here. So if we consider this operator and define this function, what we're going to obtain are called the parabolic cylinders, the isoparametric functions, the, well, the, um, the hypersurfaces defined by F are going to be this kind of, parab of parabolic cylinders. So we have here more geometry to look for. We can look for many kinds of examples that give several kinds of foliation. In the Riemannian case, in case of the Euclidean space, we only had three, con three configurations, one given by spheres, given by cylinders, and hyperplanes. In this guy, in, for this guy, we can obtain many different configurations. We, we obtain configurations given like this, which are given by this example, other examples that generalize the, the cylinders and many kinds of different, of different uh, of hyperplanes defined, for example, we're not having here hyperplanes, but we have something diffeomorphic to hyperplanes given by these parabolic cylinders. So we have more geometry to look for in the case of the semi-Riemannian uh, Euclidean space. In case of the sphere, if we consider exactly the same examples that we have given before, this guy here, this guy here, and this guy here, the Clifford examples, what we actually can do is since we do not have a norm, we can change the norm with this. And we do this also in this part. So if we change this, if we consider this kind of changes in the definition of the examples given in the case of the sphere, what we are going to obtain is that all of these functions are also isoparametric functions in the semi-Riemannian setting. So we have a lot of different, semi, uh, of different um, isoparametric functions. And what is the relation of isoparametric functions with isoparametric hypersurfaces? Well, I put here a question. Why? Because given F isoparametric, then the inverse images of regular values are isoparametric hypersurfaces in the sense given by Han. So they have constant scalar curvatures and constant algebraic multiplicities. But now, if we begin with an isoparametric hypersurface in the, in the, uh, as defined by, by Han, is it true that there is a globally defined isoparametric function having S as part of the foliation defined by, by F? This is an open question. I don't know. Why? Because in case of, uh, of the Minkowski space, there are some really interesting and complicated um, isoparametric manifolds given by this kind of manifold that are called the V-scroll. And it is not 
evident that we can we have we can give a foliation in this space given by these guys here. So it is not obvious if there exists a globally defined function such that the B scroll hypersurface is one of its level sets. I don't know if, if we can do this. Locally, it is true. Locally, if we consider an isoparametric hypersurface, we can define a locally, locally an isoparametric function. But we cannot, it is not evident how to extend this local function to a globally defined function. Why is it why it is important to us to obtain globally defined functions? Because in order to reduce this operator, into a one-dimensional Laplacian, we need globally defined functions. So we have some examples of globally defined functions, which are isoparametric, and we have many examples of isoparametric hypersurfaces that it is no longer evident that if they come from globally defined functions. Our first, first application was given by this kind of problems. These are the, the equivalent problems, the equivalent Yamabe type problems, but now in the semi Riemannian setting. So these are power nonlinear uh, equations having this ultra hyperbolic operator. So they are nonlinear equations of ultra hyperbolic class. So what we, what we have shown is that this kind of, uh, of equations, they admit a lot of different configuration of, the, of its solutions. They have globally defined solutions if we draw the solution in the, for the reduced equation in one dimension, they look like this. These are oscillating solutions, or they are given by oscillations, but they stabilize. They are stable solutions. And also <clears throat> we have positive solutions given like this. And also we have another kind of configuration given like this. We will have some blowing up solutions having this configuration or this configuration here. They exist or D negative or positive, but they explode on the other direction. And we also have this kind of oscillating solution, but they will explode in the other, in the other half line. So these are the configurations. This says that there exist nodal solutions that is to say, we have solutions having an infinite number of nodal domains. Even in this case, we have positive solutions, positive blowing up solutions, sign changing blowing up solutions, and another kind of positive solution. And all these solutions, it is interesting that all these solutions will have a prescribed geometry of its level set. The level sets, as we are using isoparametric functions to reduce the equation, what we are, what we are obtaining is that 
the level sets of u are going to be isoparametric functions in the Minkowski in the semi-Riemannian space. This is our first result. And we extend the, our result to the semi-Riemannian setting, to the semi-Riemannian sphere, that is the pseudosphere, which is given here. And we play now with the, uh, with the concrete examples that we have, with examples with L equals one, two, or the Clifford examples. These are the examples that we know that exist, that there are isoparametric functions well-defined, uh, globally defined, and all that. So if we consider one of these isoparametric hypersurfaces that has behind an isoparametric function, uh, has an isoparametric foliation, and also consider any number k, then we can obtain a solution to this Yamabe type problem just as before, but now it is going to be a blowing up solution with exactly k nodal domains as level sets. Uh, k nodal domains and s is going to be part of its level sets. What is it? What is happening here? We actually have here zero pi, and we construct the same solutions as in the Riemannian case using the double shooting method, because we are going to obtain a solution given in, all, in the whole line. And we can decompose this kind of equation into three parts, a part given in zero pi, which, is ex which gives exactly the same equation as the remaining case. And also two equations defined in this half line and in this half line. So what happens? If we look for the solutions in, in this half line, we obtain we can continue this solution, but it is going to explode here and it is going to blow up in this part. Geometrically, this is this says this set that there are some hypersurfaces, some uh, isoparametric hypersurfaces like this in such a way that if we are close enough to this manifold, then our solution is going to be, is going to tend to infinite. So as we obtain, as the, if the distance of the point X, and let's say this is, as prime, as prime tends to zero, then u of x goes to infinity. This is what we obtain <clears throat> in the semi riemannian case. And we have some, some open questions. The first open question, uh, and it is the most important for us because this gives different kind of solutions to Yamabe type problems, is the existence of, is the existence of globally defined isoparametric functions having a fixed isoparametric hypersurface as level set. So this is the, this is the main question here. This is, a, this is a purely geometric question. Can we extend an isoparametric function to an isoparametric foliation given by an isoparametric function in the semi-Riemannian, uh, in semi-Riemannian space forms. We don't know, we do not know that. And why it is important to us, because in this case, as I told you before, we obtain new solutions to Yamabe type problems. A particular problem, which is really interesting, is the Yamabe problem in the Minkowski space. So if we obtain, for instance, a globally defined function such that the B scroll uh, hypersurface is one of its level sets, then we can construct 
new solutions to the Yamabe Sky problem in the Minkowski space. Why did this is what is in why is this problem important? Because it is actually given by this operator here, by this equation here. This is a wave equation with a critical exponent. This is called critical energy wave equation that is uh, that this has been re uh, extensively studied mainly by Koenig and collaborators. So we can we uh, if we explore if, if we if we explode the geometry of the semi Riemannian uh, Euclidean space, we can obtain new kind of solutions to this to this kind of problem. And it is really, really interesting because these, these guys are complicated to solve. So these are the references. Here we prove the Riemannian case. We extend the Riemannian case here to, uh, to more general Yamabe type equations. Here we develop the theory of semi-Riemannian uh, semi riemannian reduction method and here we study the the polyharmonic reduction the, the reduction of polyharmonic operators so this is all thank you for your attention and i would like to thank again the organizers to the uh, for the opportunity of giving this talk here so see you and thank you very much <laughs>